Welcome back. I'm here again to uh, explain a bit about the process of designing some of the various cars I've been involved with over my career. Today I'm tackling the P1. P1, 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 P1. The challenge obviously at McLaren was to come up with a design language that represented the ethos of McLaren, the depth of engineering that they have from their racing development, and to do it in such a way that you could build the brand off of it. we were looking to establish McLaren as a very unique looking automobile. The secret, I think, would be to look back into nature for inspiration. And having studied what makes fast animals fast, there's a common link to all of them, which is called shrink wrap. There's no excess of material on those animals. You can see the bulges of the muscle and the great proportions of the body through the skin. The objective was to take that philosophy, that inspiration of nature, and bring it into the car design, the identity of the brand, where everything looked as tight as could be. If I start to put some lines on paper, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of what I mean. So like I always do, I set out a wheelbase that uh, pretty much represents the car I'm working on. Saying that's gonna be the height of the back of the car, you're already looking at something that is, that is extremely low, which already is dramatic, and you're already starting to think this is not normal. But then you start and you think, okay, we want a cab forward look because we want the driver to have a, a command driving position somewhere where the road is right out in front of them. We want the center of the wheel to mark the highest point on the fender so that the driver, when he views forward, he knows that the highest point of the fender in front of him is actually the middle of the wheel. So he can place the wheel in the corners exactly where he wants to by just referencing the, the top point of the fender. So keep everything low and tight, like I said, and just let the lines flow. I, I typically don't even try to guide a line with my pen. I just let it happen on the papers I'm drawing starting to look like this is the front of the car and this is the rear of the car but okay we let that go because at some point you're going to refine it to look nice pretty much this is what a starting point would look like on a supercar that's optimized for keeping it low now if we're going to feed this engine obviously we need as much air coming in as possible and in the ideal location typically you put your intakes on a on a supercar on the side here if the air is coming in through here the idea in the beginning that we had was what if we just rammed the air into the engine straight into the engine if the airflow is coming down along the side of the car why don't we just keep that air going and flowing in to the radiators that are located here but how do you do that if without turning it it means you have to have a pretty wide car wide shoulders wide body that allows the air to go over and around the the front of the windscreen by going over the shoulder straight down into the radiator so there's no turning of the air it's basically a ram air effect or ram effect so this is starting to give us this shape here so if you look in over the top of the shoulder of a mclaren p1 we created the so-called snorkel effect which is a duct on top of the roof that allows the air to come in off of this area here as you can see the airflow coming in it goes into the uh, snorkel area here and in a top view if I drew it for you that duct is pretty much working like air coming in in that direction and then flowing off to one of your turbos there and into the other turbo area there. So basically you have two channels, one taking air into that turbo and one taking in air into that turbo. That happens on the roof. And if you look at it in real life, it's a pretty dramatic looking shape. So now you're starting to get this shape, which is reminiscent or, or uh, identifiable, I guess you could say, as the P1. These designs like this are not done on a computer. A computer locks you in much too quickly and it takes away what we call the human touch. Um, I think the beauty of car design, when it's done properly, as you can see, it's almost like a, 
uh, a highly trained sculptor or somebody who really knows about proportions has done it. We tried to give cars that, that sensuality of the human touch. You can tell when a car has been designed by hand or by a machine. The, the hand part is regretfully by some companies becoming less important simply because of the speed of the process. With the computers, you work much more quickly and you can try more options, but it does take away that romance of design. Most of the most beautiful designs I've ever seen have always originated with a guy just sitting in front of a clean sheet of paper and designing with a simple pen and piece of paper. The other thing that's very interesting about the P1 is that it's built in very few pieces. It's basically the hood is one part, almost what we call a clamshell. The center is another part with the door and volumes there. And the rear is another large single piece of carbon fiber. On the front end, we had some few identification elements that we were able to incorporate to give it much more of a McLaren distinctive feel. We have uh, the McLaren logo is, is our inspiration for the headlights. So you can see how the headlights in this area here have taken a lot of influence from the McLaren logo. Another secret location for an air intake, which maybe not even the owners themselves know about it, is a secret air intake located right here where I'm marking it. If anybody ever walks up to a P1 and wants to surprise somebody else, try sticking your finger into that area right there, that corner. And then obviously when you're at super high speeds and you need extra downforce, you need to add aerodynamic elements that assist you. And I think one of the things that would have ruined the shape of the P1 is to actually plant on an old fashioned spoiler on the back. If you can envision something that only acts or uh, reveals its purpose when it's needed, uh, that's what we've done with the P1. It's called Active Aerodynamics. It's electronically controlled. At certain higher speeds, it will react and, and, and come alive. When I mentioned that we wanted to get rid of the taillights, you can't practically get rid of taillights and, and drive the car legally on the road. So what we've done is find a new solution. We've taken and given the car a great, unique, personal signature with the light. We call it light signature. At night, if you're driving behind this car from a distance, you immediately recognize it as the P1 because it can only be the P1 with this, this graphic. And so what we've taken is the trailing edge of the body and we've outlined the trailing edge of the body with the taillights such that you have this very distinctive, almost artistically drawn sweeping line that becomes the line of the taillights and they have their functions embedded within. When we were testing the P1, we were getting a lot of wind noise coming around the eight pillars off the front of the car at speed. And you would hear that wind rush, that sound of the wind buzzing along. And it's it can be disturbing and even more so the faster you go, obviously. So we had to knock off that, that effect of the wind noise. And uh, first of all, obviously research showed us what the reason was. And because the, the actual mirror arm holding the mirror that mirror having to be so far out required a fairly large arm coming off the body of the car. So if we're looking downwards, we're looking at a mirror housing like that. The actual problem of the wind noise originated when the wind flow comes this way at high speed, goes around the windscreen and then comes over and under the arm that supports the wind mirror. And you could almost say, well, eliminate the arm or do something to the arm but after many many tests it wasn't really helping helping the solution uh enough in my experience um of of biomimicry i realized that there's a, a fish in the sea that has solved it already for us the the fish is obviously the uh the sailfish the scaling that it has on its body which creates little vortexes of air bubbles bubbles that allow uh, the fish actually to swim in a pocket of air at high speed but when it's swimming in that pocket of air at high speed over 70 miles an hour by the way that air pocket has to close off at some point and the water has to rejoin in as smooth a way as possible uh, without any drag. So nature has developed the sailfish in such a way that in this area where the torso meets the tail fin here, uh, if you research it, it's pretty incredible, you'll see that nature has provided two bumps on the torso of the fish 
here. Now those two bumps, if I blow them up, they'll have this shape pretty much. Like this, an elongated teardrop you could almost say. But the funny thing is with this elongated teardrop is that it adheres to the proportions of 1.618. You might say, well, why does he reel that number off so easily? That is the law of proportions, the golden law of proportions that uh, if you study it, it's, uh, it's very interesting. A lot of things in nature adhere to that principle. That relationship of 1.618 to this shape of a bump, diblets, in this area of the torso of the body of the, of the selfish, allow the water and the air to rejoin in an incredibly efficiently smooth integration again. So there are very, very, very little drag cost. And so the solution that we came up with, and this goes for all the McLarens also, not just the P1, if you'll see it very dramatically on the, on the 12C, was to incorporate five of these diblets. What they do is they have the same exact purpose and effect of the diblets on the rear of the torso of the sailfish in such a way that the wind noise that we were having the problem with originally completely 100% disappeared. Aerodynamics and hydrodynamics are pretty much the same thing. There's just one that has a denser medium than the other. And so if you're talking about efficiency of shapes, let's look into the C because those are the shapes that are actually, uh, that have ev evolutionized to be much more efficient. So I think uh, a fish will always be much more interesting and, and practical than looking at a bird for a lot of the inspiration for highly efficient aero or hydrodynamics. There you have it. There is a little bit of information of how I've come to work and design on the P1 and turn it into the success that it is today.